So during test mining, we actually had a science vessel that followed the mining vessel. And this was full of scientists from various universities and institutions around the world, and they were measuring all different aspects of the mining operation. One of the main questions that we wanted to answer was how far would the plume spread? We had ROVs on the seabed following our collector vehicle with sensors on that measured how dense the plume was and how far it traveled. During that process, we sent what they call CTDs, which go down through the water column and actually collect samples of water at different depths through the plume. We had monitoring stations all around the test site. These monitoring stations, some of them consisted simply of white plates that the sediment would fall on, so we'd know how much sediment was actually deposited at different distances away from the mining site. We also had sensors that shine a beam of light through the water and measure the amount of sediment in the water from the reflection. And we had over 50 of these stations all around the, the test mining area. Thorium is a radionuclear that occurs naturally in the sediment. And when you disturb that sediment, you can actually track how far that sediment particle has traveled by measuring the activity of the thorium that's attracted to that particle. So we were able to take sediment cores with the multi-core at different distances away from the directly mined area. And based on the radioactivity of the thorium in those samples, we could measure how far those particles had spread. The results we got from the benthic plume were really interesting. What they showed was that as the sediment comes out the back of the collector vehicle, it forms a turbidity current. And this is where the sediment particles are actually attracted to each other and kind of stick together. And they flow along the contours of the seabed. And what we find now is that we have different zones of impact. So we have zones of high impact. These are areas that we've caused what we'd call a permanent change to the biota or the habitat. For example, if we remove the nodules, that's a permanent change. We also have a zone of moderate impact. That's where we've made a temporary change. So for example, we've covered the seabed with sediment. Over time, that sediment will be removed and the organisms will recover back to the way they were before our activity. And then we have a zone of undetectable impact so that we may have increased the amount of sediment but it's so small that it doesn't impact any of the organisms. So one year after mining, we actually went back to the site to see what the seabed looked like after 12 months. And what we found is that many of the nodules that had been covered with sediment were now uncovered and were available as habitat again for what we call nodule obligate organisms. Some of the organisms that we were able to actually go back to the precise spot and see the same organisms that actually survived. So they actually survived sediment being deposited on them. They'd been able to um, expel that sediment from their surface and they'd survived. So we saw recolonization, we saw survival, and we also saw nodules being uncovered after just 12 months. And why this is important, because that means that even within the directly mined areas where we've collected the nodules, over time, the nodules that are left behind will become available again as habitat for nodule obligate organisms. And that was a major finding. The science is in on the benthic plume. We know that the benthic plume forms a turbidity current. We know that the turbidity current settles within a couple of kilometers of the directly mined area. And this is really important because this gives the regulator now a precise definition of how far the impact is going to spread. This is very different from the narrative that was perpetuated before we collected the data, which basically said our zone of impact would spread for tens or hundreds of kilometers outside of our mining area. That is not the case, and the science is in on that.